It's hard to talk about Tammy without talking about Alabaster, so screw it, we're gonna cover both of them. And yeah, we're gonna get to Hank's pimp face. What are you looking at? Please, Hank, don't turn me out. I'm no good. Ask anyone, ask my wife. Hey folks, welcome to Squirrel Tactics. Don't forget to give a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And of course, don't forget to check out our Patreon and our sister channel. Anywho, let's do this. Tammy Duvall, voiced by Renee Zellweger, is often compared to Peggy Bundy from Married with Children due to their hair and clothing styles being similar. Though their characters are quite different, with Tammy looking to improve herself and her place in the world, and Peggy Bundy, yeah, not so much. Tammy was introduced in Ho oh Yeah, a rather fitting title considering that she worked as a prostitute, but we'll get to that. She moved to Arlen from Oklahoma City to get a fresh start and ends up being hired by Buck Strickland to replace Debbie after Debbie killed Debbie. That new gal Buck hired? Well, long story short, she's dumb as a charcoal briquette. Though she's not exactly the best at her job, nor is she the brightest bulb on the tree. This dude called and he's talking so fast. Propane this, something, gas, that. I was like, whoa. <laughs> Dang, I'm such a spaz. Tammy offers to go to lunch with Peggy because Hank is busy fixing the issues that she herself created. You know, um, if you've got no one else to have lunch with, I'll go with you. I mean, only if you want to. And after some consideration, Peggy agrees. Oh, no, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else I need to do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, shall we? I'll get my hairspray. At the restaurant, Tammy is confused by the menu. What do you order here? This menu is totally whack. Personally, I like the La Crepe Suzette. But she's impressed with Peggy's ability to talk French. Get out! You talk French? Oh, poquito. Actually, I am a substitute Espanol teacher. Yeah, Tammy is playing straight to Peggy's ego here, though not intentionally, but it does get Peggy to open up. Oh, that is so slamming. Well, when you think about it, I suppose it is slamming. They bond over their shared issues with their parents, particularly their mothers. I could be queen of Egypt and my mother wouldn't give a hoot. Well, I really know that trip. My mom and I hadn't talked since I dropped out of school. Or maybe it was since I totaled her vet. And Tammy explains that she moved to Arlen to get a fresh start. Well, that's why I moved here from Oklahoma City, yo. I just wanted to start over, you know, maybe get my GED. She then uses the cotton method of getting a server's attention, which Peggy overlooks. Dang, I'm thirsty. Hey, Pierre, <gasps> how about a couple of Diet Cokes? Pierre? Well, look who's talking French now. Tammy has dinner with the Hills, where she's impressed with Luann going to junior college. You go to community college? That is awesome. I am totally impressed. I've never even finished a whole book. And Peggy sees an opportunity to help Tammy further her education and get a GED. Basically the opposite of what she did for Lucky. If Helen Keller can graduate from college, you can certainly get your GED. Tammy is rather excited that Peggy is wanting to help her, and props to Tammy, she legitimately wanted to change her life for the better. <gasps> My G freaking ED! But Peggy suggests that they get together at Tammy's place, and we learn that Tammy had rather recently been kicked out and was living out of her car. Actually, I kind of got kicked out of my apartment last night, so I'm living out the car. Um, but we can meet at Starbucks. Tammy's beeper goes off. <laughs> yeah, I remember beepers. Anywho, she needs to use the phone. Could I use the phone in your bedroom? Anywho, she needs to use the phone, and considering it's long distance, my guess is that it's the old friend from OKC that she meets up with the next day. Spoiler alert. It's long distance, but I'll pay you back. Damn, she had beeper and long distance money? Whew. While she's on the phone, Peggy tries to get Hank to agree to let Tammy move in with them, but Hank, as he has a history of, does not want to give up his den. Not. My. Den. No way. It took me two years to get this one out of there. Peggy takes it upon herself to invite Tammy to stay there anyway, much to Hank's surprise. Hank and I just discussed it, and I insist that you stay with us until you find a new place. <gasps> what? But... You guys are the raddest. And to Tammy's delight. <sighs> this calls for a celebration. I'm staying up till 11. Little did they know that this was the first step into a world of pimps and shakedowns. The next day, that guy that Tammy was probably on the phone with, who's only in town for the hour, but could possibly be somebody else because apparently she's rather popular. That pager never stops beeping. 
and I've had it up to here with her coming in all hours of the night. Shows up to the Hill House to pick her up, and she makes sure that she looks her best. How do my girls look, Hank? Uh, I wouldn't know. <laughs> she and the man make a deal, and we learn her rates and that she does car dates. Hey, that rhymed. Hey, long time no see. You still charging your Oklahoma City rate? A hundred bucks a throw, up front, like always. I know a place where we can park. She gets back right about the same time that Hank discovered that she took the good piece of ham. She took the best piece of ham. I was saving that for Ladybird. And they're surprised to see her back so quick, but you know, sometimes people are only in town for an hour. I thought you were going out with your other friend. Oh, he was just in town for the hour. Huh. That's odd. Hank is perplexed, but she gives the money for letting her stay there, which shows her appreciation for their help and hospitality. It's 50 bucks. I mean, you guys have been so amazing to me. It's the least I can do, you know, for using your phone and chowing your food. Later, we get to see Buck shoot a shot at making Tammy the new Debbie. If you got a thirst for knowledge and margaritas, I'm free this weekend. But she turns him down, surprising Hank and not making Buck the happiest guy alive. I'm pretty booked up this weekend. Most weekends, actually. Yeah. Uh-huh. Donna, get in here! Hank decides that he should take her on his route with them and introduce her around to try and find her a good man. Or at least have a date that lasted more than an hour. He introduces her to Lane Prattley. Nice to meet you. And Hank gives them some time alone. Well, I'm going to go check the tank, so feel free to talk while I'm gone. Fine, fine. Eventually. So, how long you been in town? I think I also better check the gaskets. That's fine! Tammy and Peggy go to the mall and get the study material for her GED, with Peggy giving a little encouragement. Do you really think I can pass? Oh, please. People who haven't even graduated from high school can do this. Then Peggy gives Tammy a book and yeah, this joke kind of hurts me a little. Here is the first book you're going to finish. Congo by Michael Crichton. Mm -hmm. So as a fan of Michael Crichton, the mispronunciation kills me. Plus, if you're going to introduce someone to Crichton's work, Congo may not be the best start. Personally, I would have gone with Jurassic Park, but that's me. Yeah, there's no lasers or gorillas, but they do shoot a dinosaur with a rocket launcher. Anywho, Tammy sees an outfit that she thinks Peggy would look great in, but Peggy is a tad bit nervous about it. So Tammy just decides to give Peggy a full-on makeover. And when I'm through with you, believe me, honey, you are going to be stopping cars. Oh, yeah. Ooh, 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 she said the title of the episode. Cotton brings over his Cadillac car. This will be important later because he's using Hank's truck to go to the swap meet and make sure Hank remembers the rules for driving his Cadillac car. Under no circumstances is the wife allowed in my Cadillac car. Unless she's in a bag in the trunk. I know, I know. And when Tammy comes in and asks Hank to answer the door for her because she wasn't ready yet, we get an exchange between her and Cotton that's just, just great. Well, I'll be god dang. Do I know you? I don't think so. You ever worked Houston? No. Vegas? No. Tijuana? No. Reno? No. I really do love how Cotton immediately knew that she was a prostitute just by looking at her. The Philippines? No. Bangkok. I think I would have remembered you. Don't be so sure, sweet cheeks. I've been known to give a girl amnesia. Hank is thrown off by the idea that Tammy has a date with two different men on the same night. This is a little present for you because you are so rad. And this is next week's rent in advance. But Tammy has a gift for him, which marks the second time that she stopped Hank from thinking too far into things by giving him money. Whoa. What? You don't like it. Oh, yeah, 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 I do. <laughs> yeah, you look hot. Tammy leaves and Hank opens his gift, which is a hat, a type of hat typically known to be worn by members of a certain occupation. Well, <laughs> I kind of like it. Hank really likes the hat, and apparently the guys in the alley do too. All right, if no one's going to say it to you, Hank, I'll say it. I am jealous of that hat. Me too. Hey, man, that thing on smooth, old hat, man. He wears it as he's out driving the Cadillac car and sees that Tammy is having an issue collecting her fee from a client. Hey! Don't you ever lay your hands on a lady, you understand? Okay, 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 okay. You're ripping the jacket. Now, what's the problem here? 
This hose bag owes me money. Which is odd because earlier she said money up front, but whatever. Hank doesn't hear that part, so he stops because he sees that she needs help. When he finds out that the guy owes her money, he demands the man pay, and the man gauges the situation and decides it's best that he do so. Give her the money, friend. I'm not going to ask you twice. Okay, but you... you mess with her, you mess with me. Now hand over the money. <laughs> Okay, all right, okay. Later on, while Peggy and Tammy are at the library studying, Hank gets a visit from Alabaster Jones, who was, of course, voiced by Snoop Dogg. Allow me to, uh, introduce myself. Alabaster Jones, the main Mac Daddy of Oklahoma City. Alabaster has come to collect Tammy probably because I bet he was losing a lot of income from her not working for him. Miss Tammy Duvall? works for me. I'm just gonna be honest, the way she's drawn here, she's probably a rather popular lady of the evening, but Hank just doesn't get the situation. I am her manager. Well, she works for me now. I'm her manager. Technically assistant manager. So, Alabaster is a little bit more direct. It ain't like that, G. I am her pimp. And Hank is still unclear about the situation. Pimp? You must have her confused with somebody else. The Tammy Duval I know works at Strickland Propane. But we see that Alabaster ain't no chili pimp and is well aware of what's been going on down in Arlen. Man, don't be giving me no nut roll. I ain't no chili pimp. I got the wire on that propane scam you work. You've been tricking Tammy out all over town. By the way, for those unaware, a chili pimp is either a new or inexperienced pimp or is a pimp who only has one or two hoes in their stable. Anywho, Hank finally starts to see the light, but Alabaster continues, showing that he really had people keeping an eye on things. Driving around in your kitty, shaking Jays down for bills. Pretty sweet little operation you got going on for a small town player. <laughs> Hank thinks back on the last several days and realizes that Tammy is in fact a prostitute and he is more or less her pimp, and his reaction is rather Hank-like. Son of a... Alabaster wants Tammy back, and he gives Hank an hour to turn her over to him or else. She's my hoe, and I better have my hoe in my car, ready to go back to my hood in one hour, or you're gonna be my hoe. You dig? Then Alabaster takes his leave as only Alabaster can. <laughs> Hank drives to the library pretty much immediately to confront Tammy, who is still studying with Peggy. You! Alabaster came by my house! Oh, dang. Tammy is understandably unhappy with the news, and Peggy is confused as to who Alabaster is, so Hank fills her in. Tammy's pimp. She is a prostitute. Hank, that is a terrible thing to say. Why would you even think that? Because Tammy is a hooker! Tammy admits to Peggy that what Hank says is true and apologizes. Peggy, I'm totally sorry. And Hank kicks her out of his house. You get out your hooker stuff of my house! On the drive back to the house from the library, Peggy wants to know if Tammy was serious about getting her GED. No, I wanted to go straight so bad, but I was making janky-ass pay at Strickland, and I was never going to save enough money to move out of your place, and I just fell back into the life. And Tammy explains that she really did want to go straight, and you can hear legit disgust in her voice when she hears her beeper go off. Oh. Oh! She proves to Peggy that she has been reading the book that Peggy got her. But I'm almost finished with Congo. I'm up to the part where they shoot the super monkeys with the ray gun. Yeah, Congo is worth a read. If nothing else, watch the movie. Hank reminds her of the issues he now has to face since he took her along on his route. You compromised the sanctity of my propane route. Now I have to look that pervert Lane Prattley in the eye, and he thinks I'm a a pimp. And Tammy responds that he wasn't a pimp, but if he was, he would be an amazing one. Nobody thinks you're a pimp, but if you were a pimp, you'd be the coolest, nicest, most awesome pimp there ever was. This sentimental moment is interrupted by the arrival of Alabaster, and considering that they're driving down the road at the time, it was rather sudden and unexpected. <laughs> what the... Alabaster. So we get a high-speed car chase where Hank does pretty well considering he's driving Cotton's Cadillac car, which isn't the best at handling. Oh, damn. 
But then Hank does possibly the hankiest thing that Hank has ever done with his plan to avoid Alabaster. Hang on. This is going to get hairy. What are you doing? Getting him just where I want him. Huh. <laughs> yeah, trap Alabaster at a red light. Great plan there, Hank. <laughs> Look, he ran a red. You can't do that. And yeah, it didn't work because of course it didn't work. Hank decides to try and lose him in the alley, but Tammy finally puts her foot down and tells Hank to stop and let her out. Hank, pull over. Let me out. You dudes have already done more for me than anyone ever has. I'm gonna go back to OKC with Alabaster. So Hank agrees to pull over, but when Tammy tries to get out, he stops her and says that he will deal with Alabaster, giving us one of Hank's best lines. Hank, don't. Alabaster's a little guy, but he'll mess you up. No offense, but he's from Oklahoma. Hank talks with Alabaster, trying to play up his pimp persona and hands over all the money that Tammy had given him, which was something that he really didn't have to do, but it was a smart move. All right, man, get out of that jalopy and let's talk some business. You know, it's interesting to hear Hank try to talk like a pimp, but considering he's a propane man, I'd say he actually does a pretty good job here. Especially considering that I'm willing to bet his only time ever actually seeing or hearing a pimp was probably on television. Oh, so you ready to give me my hoe back? She's not going anywhere, chump. But I am a fair businessman, so here's all the money she's given me so far. Okay, one, that is one hell of a pinky nail there. And two, even though he got the money, Alabaster still thinks it feels like less than he should get. Man, this feels a little light. You jacking me? I am the Mac Daddy of Heimlich County. I play it straight up, yo. So Hank steps it up a bit, telling Alabaster to get out of his hood. You get the hell out of my hood. She's my hoe now. Alabaster backs down, agreeing to leave and making sure to mention that he has other hoes because, as he stated earlier, he ain't no chili pimp. All right, all right, man, you can have her. I got a stable of hoes waiting on me in the OKC. But he does have one last question before he goes, asking about Peggy. Yo, what you want for that Jasper brunette? That is my wife. And he leaves us with a pretty good piece of advice because, yeah, folks, you never marry one of your hoes. Man, that's the biggest mistake a pimp could make. <laughs> Marrying one of his hoes. And with that, Alabaster goes back to his stable in Oklahoma City and Timmy stays in Arlen, though we never see her at Strickland or hear from her ever again. But she does appear at Lucky and Luann's wedding, so at least we get that. As for Alabaster, we don't see him again, but some people believe that he was the pimp we see in the propane video game that Hank plays in Grand Theft Arlen. What we also don't get to see is Cotton's reaction to what happened to his Cadillac car. So, Tammy and Alabaster. Tammy seems to be the typical hooker with a heart of gold, and I do think that she legitimately wanted to go straight. She was tired of her old life, and she was only pulled back in due to the money that she could make. Hopefully, she went on to get her GED and moved on with her life because she really does seem to be a good person. Just unfortunately, she had a rather rough past. Alabaster is Alabaster. He's a pimp voiced by Snoop Dogg who acts like a pimp voiced by Snoop Dogg. And I find it a little surprising surprising that he would track Tammy down to get her back. As I said before, she must have brought in a good chunk of money or it's possible that she was his bottom bitch, but it still to me seems kind of odd that he would travel to go get her. What's the real reason? Well, I guess we'll never know, but at least what we do know is that according to Hank, Lane Prattley is a pervert. That's fine. No, Dale, we're all going straight. From now on, the only woman I'm pimping is sweet lady propane. And I'm tricking her out all over this town. <laughs>